The Lucky Show for the week of Georgia's game with Missouri in 2013. The Bulldogs escaping Knoxville with an overtime 34-31 win over the Vols in a very uh, costly but pr- productive win because they won the game. Uh, but Georgia loses Justin Scott Wesley and Keith Marshall for the year with ACL injuries. Um, really too bad. Looks like Todd Gurley probably won't play this week against Missouri, but he could. Um, that seems unlikely, and it looks like Michael Bennett, who left the game as well, um, will be back sometime around the Florida game, something like that. So Georgia's really got to get through this week against Missouri and figure out how to win in Nashville the week after that. And if they can do that, then all the money will be on the table against the Gators, and uh, Georgia will just have to take it from there. Um Kind of thoughts from the Tennessee game. I think a lot of people uh, thought the game would be easy, which in theory uh, made a lot of sense until everybody started getting hurt. And you got J.J. Green as your primary running back with Brandon Douglas uh, in touchdown situations being in there. So, uh, you know, for Georgia, just getting out of Knoxville has never been an easy task. Uh, They won three straight games there under Mark Richt and then got blown out two years in a row in 07 and, and 9, they, they've had to figure out how to win kind of tight ball games these last two times they've been in Knoxville. But anytime you play on the road in the SEC, you have the ability to lose. Uh, it doesn't matter really who you are or where you're playing. And um, this past week was no different for, for Georgia. Um, need to play a lot better on special teams. That was uh, particularly just really the punt. The punt, you know, the punt game has been a disaster for Georgia in terms of getting two blocks Two, two punts blocked in the last uh, couple of games. Uh, you can't give away points in the SEC, that's for sure. And uh, now the, the task will be um, figuring out how to, where to go from here. You know, uh, nationally, Georgia's still there. They maybe lost a touch of respect in the polls because of having such such trouble with, with the balls, but that'll go away if they keep winning. Uh, you got a couple of weeks here in a row where if Georgia handles their business like they should. I mean, they're, they're an eight-point favorite right now against Missouri at home. Uh, that's without Todd Gurley playing. Uh, the, uh, some teams play in the next couple of weeks before Georgia plays Florida that could really um, move out of the way for Georgia. For instance, Florida State and Clemson both are ranked in front of Georgia. Well, they're playing each other in a couple of weeks, and they, they'll you know, one of them has to lose. So um, that'll get one of those teams out of the way, obviously, in the Pac-10, actually Pac-12, Pac a couple of those undefeated teams out there remain. But each conference can only have one undefeated team right now. The only undefeated team in, in the SEC is Alabama. It remains to be seen if they can finish the regular season undefeated. They've, they've not been able to do that lately. Um, understandably so. It's, you know, it's a tough conference out there, the SEC. Uh, that's how the ball game is, is played. But this week, Georgia and Missouri um, – you know, Georgia's going to have to figure out how to slow Missouri down. I think that's a good question. Uh, you know, with the defense Georgia's played this season, it's not been the greatest thing on earth. Very, very young in the secondary. A lot of players they're still replacing, and a lot of people aren't taking that into consideration. They just want Georgia to to win and be dominant while they do that. And that that's great, but that's not reality. That's not that's not how it works in the SEC. I think everybody understands. I, you would hope everybody understands that. It's certainly not always the case. Um, one one thing that kind of jumps out to me about Missouri is uh, their inability to stop the pass. Uh, they're all allowing almost 300 yards a game against the pass, and this is against uh, not high level opponents. Uh, the the best team um, that uh, Missouri has played this season has been Vanderbilt and the. Uh, Vandy's uh, not won a conference game yet. I mean, it, it is a toss-up between Vanderbilt and, and and Indiana, who's pretty pretty rough. So we don't know really how good Missouri is. My guess is they're good. They're not good enough to beat Georgia, but we'll see. You know, if Georgia doesn't play well, uh, they certainly have the ability to lose. And you know, particularly if Ty Gurley ain't gonna play in this game, the defense is gonna have to play a lot better. Um, this is a game that you can be thankful will be around for a long time. It makes no sense at all that Georgia and Missouri would play each other, but you can you can thank the SEC's expansion for this. I mean, this this game makes no sense. It's senseless. Uh, you know that Georgia would play a team as far away as Columbia, Missouri, and for the record, that's past St. Louis. Uh, so uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think Ohio State is probably. 
closer, if not just as close as uh, Missouri. Um, so where we live in, it's not a good one necessarily sometimes, but hey, that's how it goes. Okay, let's get to the questions here the Dean Leggy Show. We've got uh, wondering about Sheldon Dawson. Will he ever play uh, at Georgia? Well, he will play at Georgia. In fact, I think he'll play wide receiver some this week, or at least he'll be out there. Uh, that's the word from practice is that Sheldon has been uh, uh, being used on offense a little bit more, and um, that's probably not a bad idea. He'll, he'll probably return a few more punts. I mean, Reggie Davis has been the one back there, but and J.J. Green has too. But I think we could see Sheldon Dawson with the ball in his hands a little bit more often this uh, this coming week against the uh, Tigers of Missouri. Do I think Georgia's offense will be anywhere as explosive as we've seen in the past thus far with losing key guys? Will we see a shift in the game plan? Uh, probably not. Uh, Georgia does what they do pretty well. Um, they were in there with J.J. Green as their primary running back uh, without... Todd Gurley without Keith Marshall, without Malcolm Mitchell, without Justin Scott Wesley, without Michael Bennett, and beat Tennessee. So I don't think uh, we're going to see much in the way of changes. Uh, Georgia, played okay. Uh, it wasn't as good as they had been. They still had 434 yards of offense, which is a lot. They still had 34 points of offense on the road. That's a lot for sure. That's a lot at home. But, uh, you know, 238 yards rushing, that's, that's without Todd Gurley, and that's pretty much without Keith Marshall. Um, that's crazy that they could be that effective. Um, they, they, ended, they ended the game with 205 yards of rushing offense without Keith Marshall or Todd Gurley in a game on the road in the SEC. So uh, I don't think they're going to change a lot. I think, uh, will they be expo as explosive? Definitely not. I mean, let's be realistic here. Uh, it's going to be tough without Todd against Missouri, but once you get Todd Gurley back, the, le the playing field levels dramatically and uh, we'll just see how so good some of these defenses are when they have to deal with them. You know, if, if you're talking about winning the SEC East, this game certainly you would imagine Missouri is going to take some losses in the conference. Uh, but uh, they get South Carolina at home. They get uh, Florida, uh, South Carolina and Florida at home. This is one of the games where if they're going to try to win the East, they got to win it. Uh, if they lose this game, obviously, to Georgia, they're going to have a hard time because they also play Texas A&M. So, uh, but if they do win, you know, there's some serious momentum for the for the Tigers. I just, I think, you know, we'll see how that goes. What is the status of Sha Shaquille Fluker? Um, I, I don't know what the status is. I guess he's just not going to play this year. I, I don't know. Um, short answer, I, I don't know. I wish, I wish I had an answer for you. Missouri's secondary has two senior corners, a senior safety and a junior safety, yet they have the worst pass defense in the SEC. How will Murray fare against them? Uh, also, I read that they have quite a bit of inter, inter, interceptions. Easy for me to say. How do the uh, new receiving cores of Georgia's match up for them? Well, you're either good, young, good, good, young, good, old, bad, young, bad, old. Uh, Missouri's allowing way too many yards through the air. Now, they're pretty effective against the run, so that Maybe they're effective against the run because people are throwing all over them. Um, yeah, it's ugly. Um, the, Missouri has never been confused with having a great defense, and I don't think this this year is any different. But they're really um, allowing too many yards on the on the pass. Um, and and considering they're going up against a guy who's thrown for more yards than anybody in SEC history, that's not a great matchup for uh, Mizzou. Uh, I. I don't know. I mean, it's, Georgia still has Chris Conley. Georgia still has Rentavious Wooten. Georgia still has Artie Lynch. Georgia still has Jay Rome, um, Reggie Davis. I mean, they're not without skill. They just don't have three of their best receivers, or actually their three best receivers right now. So, um, you know, they're just going to have to get through the game and win. Maybe special teams will make a big play for Georgia this week <laughs> rather than costing them seven points. Uh... 
have you gotten a chance to be near the guys this week? How, if so, how do you feel the vibe will be after what happened this weekend? Um, that's that's a good point because I think people that don't play the game forget that when you're in the game, all you're trying to do is win it. You don't, you know, you don't look at the point spread. You don't look at the movement of the point spread. You don't necessarily listen to pundits talk about how bad Tennessee is and all this stuff. It's still Tennessee. I mean, they still have two very good offensive tackles. They still have a perfectly fine running back. They still have, uh, you know, they still have skill. I mean, Tennessee's not without skill. Um, so the way in which Georgia won, which is becoming a pattern, uh, the fact that they won an SEC game on the road, those things all add up. And, then there's, you know, the dramatic nature of it, of course, is a big deal. Um, Aaron Murray leading them down the field again. And then the defense, you know, people can say it wasn't a stop. It was definitely a stop. I and mean, there's no question about that. If it wasn't a stop, it would have been a score. So, obviously, it's a stop. Uh, it doesn't matter that the other guy fumbled it. I mean, you get credit for that. That's how this That's how this game is played. Um so, uh, I mean, Tennessee gets credit for blocking that punt. It's not, you know, that's how it goes. But I think the big thing is those sorts of wins can uh, can really get you um, going in the right direction, I guess you could say. But, you know, for Georgia, they've already been in the right dire- direction. They just need to win. What I mean, personally, I think they they need to get out to a lead and 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 take it from there and they were on the way to doing that with Tennessee but then a missed uh 39 yard field goal that really cost Georgia i mean when it, when you look back on it a three score game Georgia doesn't lose that game i mean the game Tennessee starts rolling over playing dead because of a uh, complicated part about dealing with the pass rush when you're three score downs in the, the scores down in the third quarter, the game, the game changes. So I, I think that that was tough, you know, that missing that he clanked it off. They just barely missed it. Obviously got to start making those and, and got to, you know, Quavon Hicks missed that box and that, you know, he's played pretty well. He sprung uh, JJ on certainly, excuse me, bringing on one of those uh, touchdown runs, but got it. They got to play better on special teams. It's just really bad. To another question about uh, Shaq Fluker, will he redshirt it? Look, hey man, it looks like Shaquille Fluker's going to redshirt. And then the, what's the real deal with Jonathan Rump? I expect Rump to play against Vanderbilt, but um, I, I expected him to play against Tennessee. I don't expect him to play against Missouri. So um, we'll see. That's a long time for a hamstring. Um, but you know, Jonathan Rump's going to have to play this season and I think they expect him to play this season, but he's not played yet. And, um, we'll just see how it goes. And for that matter, Blake Tibbs, another wide receiver that Georgia's yet to use, those two guys are going to have to come in and they're going to have to be, you know, receivers four, five, and six, or in some cases with Rump, he's going to have to be the number one, two, or three. And they're just going to have to get production out of those guys. Um, the ha- A hamstring, if you goof up a hamstring, you can have a real issue for a long time. And it just plain needs rest. Is is it something more than that? You know, I, I've not been told that. I don't know. Um, but six six games is a long time to miss, even with a, even with a hamstring. Do you think the defense... <laughs> Do you think the defensive staff should simplify the defense, especially for the young guys, continues to look like Georgia's lining up late or figuring out where they need to be? Yeah, they do They do line up late sometimes. There's no question about that. But, no, you don't simplify it. It is what it is. And, um, you know, they're just going to have to play better. I mean, I thought they played okay these last two games. I mean, LSU was very challenging with the way in which Zach could throw the ball. Um but definitely against Tennessee for really for three quarters, um, they played quite well, certainly two and a half quarters. And um, they got to get off. The, the issue with the defense is not are they playing well or are they not playing well. The issue is are they going to get off the field on third down from here on out. Now, a couple of times they did get off the field. It's just that 
you know, UT went for it on fourth down. Obviously, Tennessee scored a touchdown that the defense wasn't even on the field for. So that's 24 points. Uh, South Carolina, they didn't, you know, they had a, a freebie there. So, you know, the, the defense, with the exception of uh, the Missouri game, uh, excuse me, of the Tennessee, of the uh, LSU game, they have played better since Clemson. It's not necessarily reflected on the scoreboard, but again, look, you know, let, let's not, in 2011, this defense was very good to dominant a lot of the season, actually. 2012, it took them a little bit of time, but they got to that point again at the end of the season when people say, well, yeah, that's not really true. No, yeah, it is. Go back and look. <laughs> How many touchdowns did they allow in November? Look that one up. Look up from, from the Florida game until... Uh, until uh, the the Georgia Tech game, how many how many touchdowns did they allow? Not a lot, and uh, you know they played pretty well against Alabama. Now they got tired, but they played pretty well. Same thing against Nebraska. You know he's, sometimes these bowl games can get a little bit nutty, but um, they're young, and they lost everybody on that defense. And people are like, the sky is falling because the defense isn't playing lights out. Well, no kidding, they're playing with a bunch of kids who were playing in high school last year. <laughs> I mean, Brandon Langley, I didn't think he was going to play, excuse me, uh, Quincy Margaret, I didn't think he was going to play until next year. He was starting, I think. Here's, here's the guys, okay, Brandon Langley, Quincy Margaret, Shaq Wiggins, Trey Matthews, those guys are all true freshmen. They haven't played at all. Leonard Floyd, first college season. Justin, uh, Justin, uh, Justin, uh, Josh Harvey Clemens. So many names. Uh, first season starting for him is sophomore. So they've had a ton of guys playing early. Uh, and if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't going to be, it could have been Josh Dawson. That was, Josh Dawson's got a lot of time early. Uh, it's just a bunch of guys playing college football for the first time. And certainly this group, it's the first time as a group they've been together. Now, their three best players, really kind of their four best players, are no stunner here. The older guys, it's the two guys in the top four in the SEC, Amaro Herrera and Rameek Wilson in tackles. Two of the, 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 uh, uh, Rameek is leading the SEC in tackles. I think Amaro is at four. They both are, you know, they got tons of tackles. Okay, so those guys are playing great. Garrison Smith, I think, is playing very well. And then, haha, the guy that nobody, that everybody gave up on, Ray Drew. He's, you know, five star guy. Well, he's leading the SEC in sacks during SEC games. So, um, you know, the older guys have been around the block a little bit longer, and they are playing a little bit better. Well, you know, the the young guys aren't going to be young forever. And so that that's the thing is, how quick will it be for this this group to grow up? Um, it's a slow process, and people think it's going to be quick. I mean, it's just it's just nuts. How should the offense adjust with the current depletions? They're going to need to run the ball with J.J., Brendan, uh, A.J. Terman, if he's available, or Kyle Corimpolis, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, or even, you know, I guess to some degree, Aaron Murray. Um, that, that's, that's how they'll do it. Um, here, I mean, same same thing on the defense. I realized our, we would take our lumps on defense, but I hope to see more improvement as the season progressed. Our run defense has made a turn once we were able to bring in Mays. Do you see improvements coming soon? Yes, I do. But, I mean, that's another guy. Chris Mays is his first year of college football. I mean, look, it, th this isn't going to be good. I mean, who? it's the same narrative as was used. Joe Cox is a leader. We don't need Matthew Stafford. Okay, well, uh, you know, come on. What's the relationship like between Rick and Grantham? Do you believe Rick will be the defensive coordinator going into spring practice next year? The relationship is um, Grantham runs the defense. Rick runs the team. Uh, Rick doesn't have to deal with the defense. That's what Grantham's there for. Everybody's got their knives out for Todd Grantham, and that that's you know that's what people do. It's it's, it's a little premature, frankly, but uh, that's that's the society we live in. Um, you know that's. That's how it goes, but um, do I do I think Grantham will be the defensive coordinator going into the spring next year? My guess is he will, uh, and if he isn't, then somebody else will be, and that'll be new, you know, target for people to get upset about when Georgia allows more than twenty four points on defense. That's, so that's how that's how that's going to go. Uh, are, 
our boy, fellow alumnus, Mark Schlebaugh, is predicting Missouri, uh, a Missouri upset this, this weekend. I consult, I consult you about what my mindset should be going into this weekend. Should I be going into this one anxious, or should I be expecting another Bulldog victory? I think you should expect a Georgia victory, but I do think you should be anxious. I mean, it's an SEC game. Um, Missouri was, uh, you know, sort of the hot team to pick last year in terms of being um, able to s- surprise and upset people. Uh, you know, Mark definitely knows what he's talking about. He's one of the best guys covering um College football is very good. Um, I, I can't go there with Missouri. I, it's just, uh, I think Sanford Stadium has become a real power for for Georgia. It's really changed in the last half decade, seven years, something like that. It's been, a, it's really, it's really an advantage for them. Missouri's the largest crowd Missouri's played against on the road is about forty thousand people. Um, I think it was at Indiana. That's not that's not the same as ninety three thousand. So you know, Mizzou will come in, they'll score their points, and Georgia will score their points too. Um, and and I, I expect Georgia to win, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. When will this defense begin to win on third and long? I don't know. That's a real problem. That's uh, that's not good. Rick said Georgia did not practice in full pads on Monday. They did, but they did on Tuesday. That's that's correct. I don't know if that's a question, even though there's a question mark after that. Yeah, Georgia Georgia normally does full pads on Tuesdays. They have been doing full pads on Monday, but I don't know if they have enough guys to go full pads right now on Mondays. Mondays is normally a conditioning uh, time and a scrimmage for guys who don't uh, play. So they've had three straight weeks, I think it is, of uh, Monday full pads practice. And, and maybe it is a little bit of time to sort of slow that down a little bit. Uh, another thing about this game with Missouri too, um, they're coming across country, technically, from the middle of the country uh, to this to, to Athens. It's probably a uh, three-hour flight, two and a half hour flight. They're gonna be playing the game at eleven o'clock their time. Um, they better be ready to go because I think Georgia will be ready to go, um, and and we'll see. We'll see just how loud this stadium will be in Athens. My guess is it will be pretty loud. It won't be like LSU or South Carolina, but it will be in that ballpark. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if Missouri won on the road in the SEC last year. I di- they did. They beat Tennessee in overtime. Uh, uh, kind of a rough Tennessee team last year, but um, they've yet to break through. They played the Gators pretty tight, set a 14 to seven game down there last November. Uh, but some, something tells me that Georgia figures out how to do this. In fact, they may, you know, they may easily cover the spread. I could see them covering by two, you know, a two-score win, a fourteen-point win, something like that. But um, they certainly, they certainly wouldn't be booed for 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 having a bit, you know, a, a substantial, a, a double-digit win. Uh, Georgia had had that this season. It's been one of those years for Georgia where everything's come hard, and so we'll see. You know, Missouri's ranked, so this is. I don't know what game number this is. I think this is game six. So five of the games Georgia's played, Clemson, South Carolina, LSU, Tennessee, and now Missouri have been against ranked foes. That's a lot of wear and tear. And, uh, you know, Georgia needs to figure out how to get to the finish line on this game. If they can do that, you know, probably going to see them play in Atlanta. Um, Florida and LSU have to play this weekend, and it's going to be tough for LSU uh, excuse me, it's going to be tough for the Gators to go to LSU and win. I don't care how good their defense is. LSU is going to put up points the same way Georgia puts up points. And uh, as good as Florida is on defense, they're that rough on offense. So they're going to have to score, and it's going to be tough for them to do that down there in Death Valley. Um, so this could be – this is a swing weekend in the East. Um, South Carolina has not fared very well. They've not beaten Arkansas in eight years in Fayetteville. So, um, important weekend. Georgia needs to win this game. If they can win this game, the light at the end of the tunnel is pretty is getting a lot brighter. So, that's it for this week's uh, show. Dean Leggy Show catches us back here next week.